Do you want to avoid working for the worst federal agency in the government? A ranking list comes out every year for the last two decades, and it clearly shows us the worst and best federal agency in the government. So based on how people are answering the questions, they end up getting points, and they add up all the points, and that'll show you where an agency stands. Now they also tally up all these points to show you how the government is overall, and it looks like we're down 1.1% from last year. So that signals a decrease in happiness and satisfaction in the federal government. So how are these ratings actually determined? The data is extracted from federal employee surveys by the Boston Consulting Group. The survey is over 100 questions and tens of thousands of people are actually filling out these surveys. If you're a government employee, you've probably seen it come into your inbox. And then if you ignore it or delete it, you'll be reminded, you'll receive another email. The list is split up into three sizes. You have your large agencies, your mid-sized agencies, and your small agencies. Let's look at large agencies first, and let's see what the top five best large agencies are. We have NASA with 84 points, the Department of Health and Human Services with 74 points, the Intelligent Community with 71 points, the Department of Commerce with 70 points, and the Department of Veteran Affairs with 68 points. So NASA and HHS, they've been number one and number two for years now. And you can't go wrong by starting there. And why would you want to target a large federal agency? The main reason is once you're an employee at one of these larger agencies, the internal promotion opportunities, they open up for you. So an agency like the Department of Veteran Affairs, you have hundreds of thousands of jobs there. So once you're inside the VA, if you wanted to get promoted, if you wanted to apply to another position, you can use that additional hiring path, the internal hiring path. And these five federal agencies, they ranked high across the board in effective leadership, pay, teamwork, innovation, and work-life balance. However, when we look at the VA, we see the lowest category is work-life balance. Now, I personally worked for the VA for a couple of years, and in my position, in my office, the work-life balance was great. But I think what we're talking about with the VA is a lot of the medical, the medical professionals, the nurses, the doctors, the surgeons, their work-life balance is a little bit different, right? Especially during the times of the pandemic, a lot of them felt overworked, they were overstressed. So that's what this number could be signifying. But despite the high scores, each one of these five agencies they have experienced a decrease from last year. Okay, so let's look at the worst federal agency this year. As you know, last year we talked about this, the worst was Department of Homeland Security, but now we have a new bottom. This year, the lowest ranked federal agency is the Social Security Administration with 59 points. The SSA has dropped a whopping six points from last year, and it's the biggest decline of any large federal agency. So what are the main categories holding the SSA down? We see it's effective leadership empowerment, innovation, and work-life balance. One of the main reasons is if you look at the employees at the SSA, we're looking at SSA having the least amount of employees in their agency right now than any time in the past 20 years. Even the union for the SSA has come out with a statement saying that stressful work conditions are causing severe burnout among SSA employees. The workloads are increasing and the attrition rates are rising, meaning that people are quitting and they're getting another job. In another survey given at SSA, 54% stated that they're looking to leave their agency in the next year. So the alarm bells are definitely ringing in the SSA and we're gonna see if they're gonna be able to pivot. Are they gonna be able to make a change? What are we gonna look at next year? Are they gonna stay at the bottom? We'll have to find out. Okay, now let's look at mid-size agencies. And the top five mid-size agencies are Government Accountability Office with 87 points, the National Science Foundation with 82 points, the Securities and Exchange Commission with 82 points, the General Services Administration with 81 points, and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission with 80 points. The only agency that had an increase from last year was the Securities and Exchange Commission. Interestingly, the National Science Foundation was ranked number one in pay. The reason why there's differences in agencies when it comes to pay, first, some agencies, they do not use the GS pay scale. So you can have some agencies that pay higher, like the FAA, for example. They have pay scales that actually surpass the GS scale. And then you have the staffing of each agency 
it's it's done differently. So you you might have one agency that's more top heavy, meaning GS13s and above, and another agency like the SSA that has lower GS grades. Then you have to consider performance bonuses. Some of these agencies, they pay out nice performance bonuses. There are other agencies that do not have the money in their budget and they cannot give you a performance bonus. So if you go above and beyond, if your performance is remarkable, what they will end up giving you is extra time. They'll give you time off. Okay, so the worst mid-size agency was the Court Services and Offender Supervision Agency. And you might not have heard of them. They deal with probation and parole in the DC area. And if you look through their rankings, it's pretty much low across the board. You know, a lot of people there, they're just not happy. Okay, so let's move to the small sized agencies. The top five small sized agencies to work for are Congressional Budget Office with 88 points, Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation with 87 points, Office of Special Counsel with 86 points, National Endowment for the Humanities, 84 points, and the Federal Labor Relations Authority, 81 points. Okay, so the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation and the Office of Special Counsel, they made the biggest jump of about two points from last year. Let's look at what makes these agencies so great to work in. We see work-life balance, again, recognition, transparency, and customer service. Okay, so the worst small agency to work in was the Export-Import Bank of the United States. And we saw an absolute plummet year over year from 76 points to 55 points. That is over a 20 point drop. And the biggest weakness comes from leadership. Effective leadership is low. Leadership empowerment is horrible. And senior leaders, that's bad too. I don't know what's going on over there. I actually worked really close to that agency. I would walk by going to work every day and I would see it. I never thought they had these type of issues. It's, it's quite shocking how poorly they're doing in the rankings. Now, one thing to understand about these annual rankings of federal agencies, you cannot paint everything with the same brush. Your experience is going to be different. Let's look at SSA. I'm sure there's a handful of people right now that love working at the SSA. Same thing with the Department of Homeland Security. Last year that came out as the worst, but I have some friends at the DHS and they like their job. They love their job. They wanted to stay there. They thought it was great. So take everything with a grain of salt. Do not reject a job offer completely just because of a ranking list. Now, if you are watching this and you wanna get a better job, maybe you don't want to work for the government. Maybe you already have a government job. You don't wanna do it anymore. Maybe you're looking towards the contractor side. If you wanna know what it's like to work as a defense contractor, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.